So this is the latest casting run that I did. I sized it in my Luber sizer to 309. Basically, an excuse of loud noise in the background. We're uh, getting ready for Christmas dinner pretty much on Christmas Eve. So that way tomorrow we can just hang out. But, um... So that's that one coat of Shake and Bake of the uh, Eastwood or East Lake. I think it's Eastwood Ford Light Blue. That's why it's got the bare marks and stuff on it because that's from the water basket and nose touching and stuff. <clears throat> so it just touched these. Hold on. Um, the Lubricizer just touched these driving vans here. It didn't touch this nose section. It's squirreling, excuse me. It didn't touch that nose section, right? So I'm having problems with my 311-299 bullet powder coating. It's grabbing this nose here and pull, and it's grabbing it hard enough. It's actually bullet jamming, right, type stuff, right? So it's jamming the bullet in with a 311-299 so hard that it's actually when I go to extract the case it won't let the case extract freely and easily and as well it won't uh, it'll actually separate the bullet from the case so I'm switching to this bullet here I'm trying it out at least and doing some R&D with it this is a lead two cavity uh, 309 200 I think it's a 2R with that same powder coat shake and bake size to 309 it barely touches those driving bands as you can see they're nice and squared off but I'm still having a little bit of problems with it grabbing yesterday I went shooting and it's having just a slight bit issues of it grabbing but it doesn't separate the bullet from the case when you go to pull it out so I took my uh, clearing rod and uh, jammed a bullet into it to start it and then with my hand and then jammed it back out right and you can note so I just threw it into the chamber it funneled into the chamber when I pointed the rifle down and bopped the back of the bullet a couple of times with my hand with my clearing rod and then bopped it out and then collected the bullet right as you can see you can it doesn't want to roll right for the simple reason it's now engraved with rifling see that little edge on the right there and on the left so I bopped it in and it actually is grabbing the, the what appears to be just the uh, powder coat by maybe like a thousandth or two engraving. So they shoot really well at 25 yards, but they don't function real well. They function well enough, but I want it to be perfect. So that's why it's marred on the front. That's the adapter on my clearing rod marred on the back a little bit same thing it's not grabbing the driving bands because by the time it wedges all the way in there from a couple bops it's just hitting the first little driving band it doesn't appear to have any real serious marks on the driving bands of rifling but definitely on the nose you can see it actually curves there and it's hard to the cameras are shit this video is going to be a little disjointed and fucked up because English sucks but um so I'm thinking if I could measure an as cast reduce it by 2000 on the nose I can get a custom bullet mold for the nose profile to be that but I have to have a set of calipers and I gotta wait until I have funds for that but the driving band can stay the same it looks like it's pretty interesting but I'm not having any issues with I'm not having any issues with lead getting around the the case mouth. Oh, that's uh, medium grained rice that I was trying out. It works a lot better in my opinion. No, uh, no brass cleaner in it. 
I'm not getting much lead around it, around the case, but I'm getting a lot of fouling around it because of star chamber, or, you know, because what I call a star chamber because of the uh, fluting cut into it. So most of my issue that I'm having is um, strictly just um, fouling, which isn't a big deal because you're going to have fouling anyways. It's a dirty burn and pistol powder I'm using. It's not letting anymore with the powder coating. And I had run, uh, I'd run about, yeah, here, actually, I could show you real quick. One second. I don't know we how well that's gonna show here. Random case. Empty, right? Primed. Oh throw it on the scale. And what sucks though is since this is all one pedestal unit a lot of energy is being transferred into here when I'm running this so as you can see my powder is settled but yeah it's about what it's running 7.8 7.9 and I've gotten like with this being like a uh, zero this is the non-crushed one. This is being about 202.7 grains or so. Let's weigh the crushed one real quick. 202.2. So, you know, they're within a half a grain. They shoot really good at 25 yards. I had a group there and they were within like that or less. You know, about a quarter size. Um, so they're pretty good on accuracy because they're, I think the aluminum mold puts out a little better uh, weight, but uh, with, that amount, I don't know, with that much powder, I was getting about 1100, 1180 feet per second with a Garmin chronograph that was out at the range. Some dude had a, one of the Garmin uh, Doppler radar ones that were the size of like a GoPro, which is cool shit. I didn't know they made them, so... So yeah, just trying shit out, trying to figure it out. I gotta get one that the hopefully the the lands don't grab it too hard to where it'll feed in and out, but yet the driving bands will completely drive it. Or uh, get one that's just a long bearing surface for the the grooves, which is probably what I'm gonna get. Just a powder coat special, get a nose section that's gonna get seated above the case. That's you know, uh, barely bore riding, like you know, for the the land riding, and then um, the uh, driving band's going to be a full 308. I'm thinking about getting the lead slug to cast out about 306, maybe 307, probably 307, and uh, the powder coating should add the rest of the thousands. So. Yeah, I, I gotta figure out how much the powder coating's actually expanding the bullet for size and then adjust for that and I've gotta get uh, measuring tools to do that. Yeah, I'll stay posted. I'll try my best to put up everything.